Welcome one, welcome all to another Route Pros vlog. I'm James Poister, and we are going to do a special one. You know, as we go through this COVID-19 virus, and uh, whether we see the light at the end of the tunnel or whatnot, there's one secret ingredient to success, and that's leadership. So join us today as I give you 10 tips on how to lead your staff through this ever-important times. You know, we are going through something that I don't think any dry cleaner, anybody really ever could imagine. And as we start to see maybe a downswing and maybe an upswing and an uptick and whatever, and again, depending if you're route heavy or store heavy or no matter where you're at, this is going to be a webinar that I think that can help you out. Now, this is kind of a really interesting quote from a long time ago. John F. Kennedy said this, when written in Chinese, the word crisis is composed of two characters, one meaning danger and the other meaning opportunity. It's kind of interesting that we have this, you know, little phrase here when you think of the words crisis and then you think of danger and, you know, maybe a situation where you've got fears and whatnot, and then you have opportunity. So join us here as we go through these steps on how to be a better leader. The main theme of this webinar is going to be lead by building organizational resilience. Now, what I think is really intriguing is this flower here. It kind of maybe symbolizes what we're going through. We're kind of surrounded by this desert, and we're not quite sure what's going to happen, whether we're going to grow. But through this, you see this beautiful little flower sprouting through, and we're seeing a lot of success stories like that. So as we get ready for our 10 steps, just think of this image as we kind of prepare for some leadership tips. As we prepare for this, let's look at the word resilience. Let's define it with two unique definitions and what that means for us. One, the ability uh, to recover from or adjust easily to misfortune or change. This is from Webster's Dictionary. And what I think is kind of cool about this is it gives us this formula maybe that we look at and say we can recover, we can bounce back or adjust and make it easy. I think if we overreact then we could put ourselves in a position where we won't bounce back. The second definition is the ability to spring back into shape or elasticity, kind of like a rubber band. And when I think about this, I look at this picture, this guy kind of holding, it looks like dominoes, but you know, obviously the cards are falling where they are. So if we can look at this and say we have the ability to do it, so it's kind of like a little bit of do we have the willingness and do we have the capabilities? Absolutely we do. We just have to look at it from these two unique definitions. If we kind of define this in the Route Pro world, we kind of have this kind of motto going on, advancing despite adversity. You know, when you look at this situation, we kind of have that advancing, which is where you have vision, kind of a goal, kind of you define a game plan. You know, despite is really being proactive, not so reactive, or on the worst side, waiting for things to happen. And adversity is, again, being able to accept those small or big challenges each and every day. This is what a lot of you guys are going through. So again, if we can advance despite this adversity, we know we're going to keep going and keep growing. So step one is to collaborate with your staff, to work with your staff, have team meetings. Maybe you brainstorm a little bit, establish that trust. You know, one of the things that's really important right now is creating what we call a work-life balance. We'll talk a little bit about this later. 
you know, being able to balance a work schedule with a life schedule. Because again, with school that got out and now all these other changes going on, we don't know what it's going to look like even at the end of this. Uh, define that resilience. Go over those two definitions of resilience with them and share your vision. Make sure this is, again, the word collaborate really means with. Work with your staff. Don't work against them. You know, work kind of even for them. Let them know that you're listening. And again, I think having team meetings and constant conversation, very important right now in leadership. Step number two, kind of set up a foundation for discovery and recovery. I think we're going to have to clean up some messes. I mean, I think it's going to be interesting to see what happens when the new normal comes out. Now, how do you do that? Again, you define some goals. You define some priorities. Establish stability. That's probably a real important one. Establish a foundation right now. Um, you're going to maybe have to establish some new techniques. Maybe some of the staff's going to be cross-trained a little bit. Uh, again, develop that game plan. Again, kind of look and say, hey, look, we are moving forward. One of the things we've done here at Route Pro University is make sure we communicate with our staff basically almost a Monday, Wednesday, and a Friday saying, hey, here's what this week's going to look like. This is what we learned from last week. We kind of do a, uh, you know, how are we doing a Wednesday type of meeting? We go over other things. And then Friday, we kind of say, what was our lessons learned? And what's our game plan for next week? What's our schedules? So again, we do that. We develop that game plan. And then we're talking long term as well. And probably the bottom line is we've kind of created a visual roadmap. Um, we've basically done some new things. We had to make some adjustments here with production, so we had to kind of get creative as well. So again, set up that foundation for discovery and recovery. I guarantee you that'll increase your leadership skills and get your staff to buy into you more. Number three, set up a, fa a leadership foundation. This is kind of with you. This is where you have to do a little bit of self-evaluation and kind of really increase and develop maybe your own leadership skills. And here's some really key ingredients. And the key word here is you see be. Be positive. Be the rock. Be informed. Be proactive. Be flexible. Boy, this is a big one in leadership. Sometimes leaderships get stoic and, and, and they get, you know, like, a, like hard. They get hardened. And so you got to be like clay, just like you're trying to get your staff to adjust. You've got to be flexible as well. Be the lighter, as Mark would say, be the we can. Uh, a big one, be present and engaged. You know, there's a lot of owners that sometimes aren't that engaged. And so no matter what your scenario is, make sure you're engaged with your staff. And again, be the leader that leads. Don't be the leader that tells and, and barks and, and, you know, shows your fears. Be a true leader. And if you need to look that up in the dictionary, I advise you to do it right now. Number four, lead, not preach, not direct or dictate. This one's a pretty big one. Um, if you notice this little picture down here, I think it's really important. You see this all the time. You know, you see when there's work to be done, either the leader's out in front or they're back there behind their barking out orders. Be the top guy. You know, again, how do you do that? Again, group meetings, discussions, have one-to-one -one meetings with your staff, you know, get an idea how they're doing. Lead from the heart. You know, you've got to show them your care. We'll talk about that, which leads also lead with empathy. They're going through fears. You know, you may not as an owner or a manager be in the position where you've had to live paycheck to paycheck. Maybe you do now. Now you're looking at finances unlike anything you've ever seen before. So again, Understand what your staff's going through. Have some empathy. And the bottom line is set your fears aside. Too many times leaders' fears come out. And when that happens, that's when they will lose trust in you. And they will fear that you're not in control or you don't have decisions. They're looking for you, again, like we said before, to be the rock. So you're going to have to learn to set your own fears aside. Number five, and of course, this is our old Route Pro adage, the Prepare to develop your people to develop your staff. Um, this is, Ken, kind of what the secret ingredient we always say of Route Pro Consulting. It's been our mantra, you know, it's been our, our uh, mantra, I should say, or our motto or our vision or however you want to put it. You know, how do you do it? Go over the disc again. Look at their disc profiles. I guarantee you some of them are going to change. But if you look at them right now, you'll see who they were before they went into this. And I, I truly believe I think a lot of people should get their disc profiles redone after this is all said and over. Identify their strengths. You know, uh, utilize those strengths. Figure out, put your aces in your places. We'll talk about that here in a second. 
recognize their hurdles, you know, their emotions, their emotional responses right now that they're going to have. Look at their motivators. So those motivators can get them going and maybe define some new roles if needed. If there's some new roles for them to play that can bring huge value to your company, make that adjustment. You know, again, it's really important that you fully understand your staff. But again, the best way to do it is to develop your people to develop your business. And I guarantee you're going to get through this if you can do that. Which leads us to number six, the develop your people, to develop your business implementation. How do you put this in place? And again, number one, easy, 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 easy. Put your aces in your places. You know, I'm not the biggest fan of cross training. I think right now we kind of have no choice in some regards. But again, too often I'm seeing people put in positions where they're going to fail and they're going to get discouraged and they're not going to blossom. Uh, maybe some continual education. You know, there's plenty of things that you can do, especially if you got that PPP money. You know, you could give them some opportunity to learn more, to earn more. And again, be on our Route Pro calls or have them look at the vlogs. You know, I'm not trying to self-promote our vlogs, but there's a lot of good information that's come from you guys or best practices that are in there. Again, find out other calls. Again, if there's some DLI calls and, and anything else that they can maybe be on. Um, recognition, give them some one-to-one -one recognition or some delegation. You know, one of the best things you can do is delegate. You know, it seems a little bit even more chaotic now than ever. I don't understand. I, I thought it would slow down and then maybe we'd be sitting around doing nothing. And it seems like we're all as leaders running crazy. And, and again, maybe you find some rewards. Some of them could be financial. And again, we can get creative with that PPP stuff or the grants or whatever, whatever else you're looking at. So again, recognition, delegation, rewards, that's a great one, two, three punch to get them going and growing. Number seven, recognize your employees' needs. I think this is probably more important than you ever think. You know, this is what they need. They need stability and trust, and they need compassion right now. Um, they need hope. They need to know that there's hope. And sometimes that hope can be defined not in just the future of the world or their own life, but the future of the business. Uh, I know that in my situation, my staff both times, if, you know, when our major meetings we've had, they, they've seemed a little hopeless. And I had to sit there and say, okay, you know what? Yeah, it doesn't look real good right at this moment. Our sales are down. But here's hope, and we're celebrating any new customers. They need to stay active. They definitely need to be active. Don't let them get complacent. Um, I kind of, you know, look at, at Kayla, my manager here, who's doing a great job. She's really stepped up, and she's staying active on her own. We stayed active at first. We had nothing to do. We were trying to figure out what to do. So we started, you know, mailing out some mailers, and we started doing a lot of we miss you's, and we cleaned the van, and we just stayed active. Now its business has picked up a little bit. We're getting some new customers. So again, keeping her active kept her away from being complacent. And of course, the bottom line is they need to be led. Your role is, again, to lead them. Don't let them wander off. Lead them, direct them, shift them, nudge them, whatever you need to do right now to keep them focused is really probably one of the most important needs they have that they may not know it. Number eight, people don't care how much you know until they know you care. I've always said this is one of the most important leadership uh, techniques that you can have. It works in sales, it works in management, it works wherever in ownership. And again, one of the things I think that's important right now is a work-life balance. Um, take time for your staff as well. Make sure you find time. You know, some of it is, you know, is, you know we're directed and we're, you know, challenged and we're put in positions we may not want to be as an owner right now. But take time for your staff. If you're in management, again, sit down. Let Know what they're going through. Maybe you have to assist at their personal needs. Um, I met with both of my staff members individually this week and said, what do you need right now? What can I do to help? And one of them was as simple as buying some furniture. You know, it was kind of, you know, I was like, well, why don't you, you know, it was, it was kind of, again, that mentorship as we like to talk about. Again, find solutions to work in life. You know, um, find solutions to maybe their financial woes right now. Uh, help them. We had a situation where somebody didn't get their, their $1,200. Well, it's because something hadn't happened. Their bank didn't get there. And so the manager helped them go online and get their check. Again, sometimes they need that help. Be aware of their fears and cares. Be, um, you know, in the forefront. Ask them, you know, is everything okay? Um, we've been talking about doing that with customers, but with your staff, because mentorship has its privileges. Because once you earn the right to be their mentor, leading becomes kind of second nature. They're going to follow you 
And again, we always say a leader taking a walk without anybody behind them is just somebody going out by themselves. You need them to know that you care because if you do, I guarantee it, they're going to respond a lot better. Number nine, we're going to have to re redefine roles in our entire organization. I mean, obviously with the, the shifting of stores to routes and, you know, work-life duties, you know, all the stuff that's going on right now, we're going to have to figure out some new roles, some maybe some new tasks and new duties, new responsibilities. Um, you know, it's been amazing to see some of the staff members that have stepped up their game, even on their own. They've taken on those responsibilities. Maybe you're going to have to define some new expectations. Again, without expectations, you get frustration and conflict. Very important. Maybe you give some people new titles, some new promotions. Um, obviously, the bottom two, new strategies, new goals. You know, set realistic goals right now. Um, you know, a lot of people with sales, they have their, again, their gyms, their goals, expectations, minimums. Be realistic with that. You know, don't over uh, bound. Maybe, maybe make it more about attempts and make it more about uh, leads that have been generated. Because again, obviously, if the customers aren't biting right now, it's going to be a little bit tougher for them to get their results. But again, we're going to have to set up some new creativity. You know, we're going to have to, again, make sure that we communicate this with them. And again, just like we said in step one, collaborate with them as well. And finally, number 10, evaluate the process and the progress. And again, create your own lessons learned. You know, measure your staff temperature. You know, this is, again, going back kind of the collective nine other steps. Again, they don't care and leading and empathy and all that stuff. Find out where they're at. You know, are they bought in is a real another way to do it. Measure results. You know, take a look at results. Whatever you're doing, whether it's retention or whether it's conversions or production numbers, again, continue to measure those results. Look for best practices. Again, share them with the group. A lot of the things that we continue to share with uh, you as our Route Pro members is some of the best practices that we're hearing, whether they're working or whether it's just an idea. You know, sometimes we don't know until we try Get customer feedback. This is huge right now. Get any customer feedback. And again, stay engaged with them and also get employee feedback. Find out, hey, what do you think? Uh, again, it goes back to step one, which is kind of going back in circles, is collaboration. So again, evaluate, kind of measure where you're at and uh, adjust accordingly when needed. Now, earlier we quoted JFK, John F. Kennedy. And I'm going to get out of the way so you can see the symbol here. And there's two kind of variations of it. When written in Chinese, the word crisis is composed of two characters. One represents danger, one represents opportunity. And that's actually incorrect. It really isn't what that states. And again, you can tell by the giant X that I threw up there, that when you change it, it really is one represents danger and one represents changing point. Now, what I think is interesting about this is replace the word opportunity like it really should be with changing point. And what does that mean in leadership? Well, because of the danger, or another way to put it, because it's a crisis, is the fact that we are decreased in sales and we are in danger of not paying our bills. And again, it depends on where you're at with the, with the loan and the tax credit mindset and all that. But as a leader, right now, this changing point, whatever you're doing to adjust, and it, again, it doesn't necessarily need to be systems. It could be in your leadership, your staff, your staff responsibilities. This will then create what I would think that opportunity is. So even though JFK got it wrong, I think where he was going with it maybe was a um, was right in, in thinking and saying, hey, the changing point you do now will create that opportunity. So again, we're at this point, wherever you're at, and I think it changes. I think we have to adjust on the fly, you know, daily, weekly. Um, hopefully this is going to end soon. Um, and again, whatever crisis, sometimes crises may not be this pandemic like this. It could be that your staff, you know, implodes. It could be that um, you deal with bad weather like we see. So again, this is a great time for you to be a leader because you can step up your game and you can raise the bar, which again, raises your chances of being in business when this is all said and done. So it leaves us with a couple more points. Um, this is kind of self-evaluation. You need to ask yourself these questions. Am I leading through the crisis or just managing my day? Am I just going through the motions to get to the end of the day? You know, we see a lot of scenarios, whether it's during this time or even just during the regular season or or even, you know, in a busy season or a slow season, 
where managers or leaders sometimes are just trying to get to the end of the day, like they're running a day race and they're not looking ahead. They're not changing. They're not adjusting. And again, they're not leading. They're just kind of doing. So again, great question to ask. Am I engaged with my staff? Truly believe you know me on this. If you're not engaged with your staff right now, their chances of developing uh, just continue to decrease. Ask yourself that. Challenge yourself. Make sure you see if you're engaged. And do they know what our game plan is? Do they know where we stand with this? Because again, if they don't, then uh, they're just kind of going through the motions as well. And some final questions to ask yourself, are we prepared to return back to where we were or where we want to be? You know, I'm seeing a lot of people made route adjustments and production adjustments. And, um, you know, some dates are coming around May 3rd, May 5th, May 15th, May whatever. And again, I think we'll have this little lull. I don't think it'll be just like a light switch. But are we prepared for that? You know, nothing could be worse right now for you to have all these clothes come back and not able to handle it. So be prepared for that. Am I, am I as a leader, getting comfortable with this downtime? I, I mean, that's a great question to ask yourself to make sure you're not. Don't get too complacent. Don't get too fat right now on you because what can happen is you're going to slow down and that'll also lead uh, to your staff decreasing as well. Like I said in the last one, are your employees getting comfortable as well? Make sure they're not. That's going to do it for this vlog. I hope you guys enjoy this leadership uh, training. I give um, hats off to some people that had made some comments on this. We did this live uh, earlier a couple weeks ago, but uh, had a lot of people asking if I could send them the notes, and I thought, you know what, let's just redo it. And so again, some of the things that um, that I have you know put in this vlog were thanks to you, some of your comments. So we thank you guys for your support. Continue to grow, continue to go, and I tell you what, we're going to get through this together.